It's so perfect. Good. Okay. Looks good. Episode eight. Episode eight. We found him. We convinced him. We trapped him and he was surfing Rockies. We parked Zord's truck behind him and trapped him oh. in. We got on a podcast. They won't Actually, let me leave unless I do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Blocked him in. How was it? The waves. It was fun. John got some pretty sick ones, and it was you're actually being really aggressive out there. Carl would not give me a wave. <laughs> Jesus. No, it was fun. But uh, I actually did see John have to paddle battle a civilian, and the civilian won. He saved me out. He paddled right. Yeah. He paddled this right. Huge. He paddled right into me, and then he went left. Who was this? I don't know. Some don't know. guy just mad dog. Just an army. Yeah. It was funny. I was out the back watching. This paddle dog on, like, I that's John. <laughs> and I see John, like, pull out, like, laughing, smiling, and it's just some, like, guy going left. Oh, heavy. Oh, that's loud. Oh. Okay. I think we're settled in here. Yeah. Well, our second guest, John John Florence, or John Florence now, because he got old enough, changed his name to only one John. But uh, it's been pretty crazy here from the outside looking into the CT. <laughs> With your guys' new, like, structure of the contest starting here, do you like how it starts in Hawaii now and ends in <laughs> California? Um, I am getting used to it. I think I was used to, like, when the tour started, I was used to leaving, packing my stuff and leaving. And then you kind of, when you step away from home, you're, like, you're, like uh, kind of, like, stepping into, like, okay, I'm training and I'm getting ready for contests yeah where when it starts and you're at home it's kind of hard because you're still at home and you have your friends that you want to free surf with and like i want to free surf with you guys but then i'm like kind of in comp mode and it's kind of like a hard balance to create rather than when you just separate yourself and go away from it like the only thing you're focusing on is on competing mm -hmm. um and not really so much in like getting good waves and being here at home and growing up here i mean you guys know how it is like we know where's good like every day yeah and there's always somewhere that's fun yeah. During the winter, and so you're just, it's kind of like surf stress every day. I, I didn't even think about that part of it. Yeah. Like when you're, so you're so used to leaving and going into comp mode. Yes. But then you're home already with like the off season, and then it starts here, and you're just so in your routine. Through the main like, part of our winter. Yeah. Whereas you would end your event in the beginning and yeah. then have the rest of the winter to like have fun. To surf and have fun, and then you like get, like I used to go to Snapper for like a week and a half get my boards together there and then leave a lot of my boards there, come home for a week and do like a little reset yeah. and then go back a week before the event. And then you're just like, yeah, you're, it's like you're, yeah, I don't know. It's like homeschool or going to school. You're like, when you're yeah. doing homeschool at home, it's really hard to like focus, Yeah, you know, or even working from home. It's hard to like focus. Cause yeah. And speaking of homeschool, I mean, I know that you guys did homeschool for a little bit, but did you, what did you finish? Did you finish? <laughs> I definitely didn't. <laughs> didn't either of you I thought you. I thought you. I finished. I have you a little graduated. paper. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is you, it a GED or is it like full graduation? Full graduation. You, his is legit. I have a full graduation paper. No way. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. John's the I'm a high school graduate. The, the only one <laughs> out of the team. <laughs> only I mean, one out of three brothers. Three brothers. Yeah, yeah, they did. Because I graduated from normal school. I made awful. it to. Uh, you made it far enough that you were able to finish your last year at home. Yes, I think Whereas, I only finished my senior year at home. Oh, you went all the way to 11th grade? Yeah. yeah. At Kahuku? Yeah. Because I left at 8th, and I had so many years of homeschool ahead of me, I was like, this is this is, is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd rather just be on the beach surfing. So you're telling brothers. me you're not going to watch me be on a computer with internet. <laughs> <laughs> and you think I'm going to sit here and do homeschool. Exactly. <laughs> like, we were like traveling with a tutor. That was like supposed to be tutoring us, that, yeah. and we were like, this, yeah. this, is, like, not, this is, not. is not gonna work. That's hilarious. But you guys ended up so successful and yeah, great. Like, um, well, me and Nathan were talking about it yesterday, and it's kind of, I think when you, uh, there's an interesting balance with, uh, I don't know, I don't have kids yet, but the way I would like to raise my kids, what I do is, is you see what they're interested in, and then you support that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is yeah. to support what they're they're actually interested in. Because then they want to do the work for it and they want to do yeah. it and they want to like get into it. And um, at least that's how it was for us kind of growing up. Like we love surfing and yeah. our mom was just like, was just like, okay, like everything goes towards surfing. Yeah. And when you love something and you have all the support for it, it's like, I mean, you just, 
well, end up growing in it. Yeah. On top of that, like we've talked about it too before, is just when you're super psyched and super into something, like you can learn ten times as fast. Totally. Versus yeah. something you're not quite interested in and you don't retain anything. Like your yeah. memory literally won't hold it. But something you're real psyched on, exactly. you can learn like ten times as fast. Yeah. What we were we talking about? Like, we were talking about the schools in. Or John, you were like, there should be a school where it like leans into kids' specialties. And I was saying, I think Italy actually like does it. And then I think Norway does it too. I was just If the kid shows promise in a certain, whether it's math or he's sporty or whatever, Uh they lean and direct the kid into what he's good at. And they become super specialized super early on. So by the time, if they go to college, they're already nearly like pro at what they want to be. And it just gives them to where they have like elites, I think, in the industry or the sport early on versus the kids like maybe here they go okay i finished high school what do i do oh i gotta go to college but what do i go for oh i'll take a range of classes and i'll go party for four years that's yeah that's yeah that's exactly what your mom did with you guys pretty much yeah but before i guess that was a thing in italy or whatever i think that's how school yeah i I mean i had to go to school my dad was pretty gnarly about a lot of things yeah <laughs> but but as far as surfing it was the same yeah page. i mean like, i was with you guys water, pretty much yeah. every day when i got out of school yeah i just run down the beach but you guys were there hours ahead of me see that bird oh what? wow bird has a full little mohawk right here oh weird sometimes they fly into this window and i'll walk outside and they'll be all dazed <laughs> like, <laughs> really? grass. yeah they'll be so you hear a little thumb in the thing <laughs> like, like whoa and then there'll just be a bird like sitting there just like so confused that like, got knocked out. Um, something I wanted to get into was, so we all make content, right? We all do, like me and Cody do the YouTubes, but I always found this interesting. You and Jamie, you are doing content like way, obviously way before us, but from the beginning and then it led up into like what you have now, your own production company, View from a Blue Moon, probably like considered the best surf film made, sure. can't really be matched. But when we were kids, like you were one of the first people I saw taking the GoPro out, editing on iMovie, like Mm -hmm. the whole content thing, Jamie similar, he was making his own films when films were a thing where some servers don't do it and some do. I think Jamie kind of got me psyched on it because Jamie was kind of doing a lot of his own editing and filming and and things like that. And I think just, I always enjoyed taking photos and stuff with cameras. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of was natural. But then eventually like I bought that Sony, remember? And we would trade off filming a bunch. Yeah, I was actually more stuff. a filmer than a surfer at one point. <laughs> I, like, I remember that. I was like going for hours on the beach. Like, fuck. And then, uh, <laughs> but there wasn't, like, YouTube was around, but it wasn't like the platform like it is today. No. I it, feel like then, though, you guys were all like films were the thing. Yeah, it was like short films and like trying to make short movies and stuff um, was the whole thing. It wasn't on like video. as much of this like vlog type thing. And yeah, and like Vimeo was like the spot yeah, to put up yeah. your little edit or something. It's too bad no one was on YouTube. I know. Oh my God, because now you it would just be huge, like, yeah. You'd start it then. And was it like something you were like, oh, like a lot of like, we like being kind of, but we're also like, hey, this is going to advance us in like what we do as careers because yeah. our career is built around content. And eyes on. I was like, then I feel like it wasn't, were you just doing it because you were psyched and you wanted to make a sick edit? I was just doing it because I was psyched on making sick edit. I didn't really care if it was like going out or what. I was just amped on making fun edits. Like I would take, uh, in a lot of our earlier edits, like I would just take the camera and go film like time lapses and things yeah, like that for fun. And like, I think one of our earlier, like well done edits, like it's called departure delayed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one, like all, most of the lifestyle stuff is the stuff that I filmed. Yeah. And then I just went around and Blake filmed a little bit and it was just more fun kind of having with the camera, this kind of general, like just shooting stuff. Yeah. And like, remember we would like go and film your truck going through huge puddles yeah, and slow motion. I about that. Yeah. I, and I, then, it's all coming back to me yeah. how much you were in the camera. Yeah. So and then we'd film like, yeah, just all kinds of little weird stuff with it. And that so. That was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it made it so fun, and and then yeah. you, it was cool. You put it all together, and it makes this kind of rad, cool, like, I don't know, like, showed, like, our lifestyle, but in just, like, a fun, cool way. Yeah, it wasn't vlog. It wasn't, like, a it vlog. Wasn't a vlog. It, it was vlog. It was more of a visual, like, yeah. fun kind of looking thing. Remember the weird little movie you made where Kieran gets shot off the ledge? 
Like it yes. ends in like a death and you like fall and you're like, Eli, 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 Eli. <laughs> It's so crazy because Eli yeah. was the stunt man. Yeah. And yeah. now like he gets Eli a huge stunt stunt so right now. Brandon shot Eli with a paintball gun. Eli had to take a paintball to the chest yeah. a couple yeah, of times for a shot. That was so he still lovely. talks about taking the paintball to the chest. That was like 10 years ago. I no. secretly have the video on my computer somewhere and I'm so embarrassed of it. And Eli keeps asking me for it. <laughs> Why? I say no, it's gone. Why are you gone. nervous? <laughs> I don't know. I just it's funny. Are it's you so acting funny. in it? I no, forget. I'm not. I found uh, it. It's so it's funny. We need to get that yeah. back out. Remember you you sunk my truck in a massive puddle? Yep. You got me to sink my truck yep. in a puddle. Tr- that puddle was like four to five feet deep. Remember how sick that yeah. was? The one shot came out so Insane. sick. It's in one of our edits. Yeah, I had this like old school Tacoma four wheel drive car. It was a beast of a car. Yeah. It did everything. Yeah, John was there still is really good at talking his <laughs> friends into like doing the craziest shit. I remember I was just like yelling. John's like, oh, this puddle looks sick. Like you go through first because he had his like sick raptor. <laughs> yeah. I was like in my little Tacoma. The first like, raptor yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah. And you're like, you'll make it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Literally the first raptor. But oh let's no, you're the worst. Do you remember it? Uh, when we drove my truck onto the beach? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> That was literally the worst. Well, I had what? Okay. And we were too scared to call your dad for help. Yeah. Because we were like, he's going to rouse us. Because like, go through the yeah. sand patch. And we're like, yeah, we're four wheel drive. We're going to go through the sand. <laughs> and the car just went. <laughs> it just sucked. sank so low that the tires were spinning sucked. in the air. And yeah. 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 you had a frame on the sand. <laughs> we were like, what? Kozal, don't stop pressing the gas. And I'm like, I'm not stopping. <laughs> I'm pressing the gas. And he's like, don't stop. And the car is just sinking. Yeah, that was. Um, we because I had watched, spent... I watched a video on um, YouTube of your car, like driving crazy through sand. I think we had to let the air of the tires. We yeah, spent no, that four, was hours four hours digging that truck out. Yeah, that it was, was like evening time by the time we got it. It was out. a big learning moment. I got you back for my car. Yeah. Because <laughs> John. It was a big was... learning moment. <laughs> the story I was telling before was John was like, yeah, I go through the puddle first because he was skeptical. <laughs> Of how deep it was, I was like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, I know. Like, getting Bro, into the you puddle. hit it fast though. Fast. Like, I thought you were making it. But I like got just barely sticking out of the other side of the puddle, and the car just died. <laughs> and <it> had to, <laughs> literally died. It just died. Full water. I had to sit there for a little bit, but it started back up. Yeah. And then it had problems ever since. Yep. That was pretty funny. Those are good times. Yeah, yeah. those are funny. We times. used to hang out a lot more when we were younger. Like every single day. That. Yeah. Yeah. Surf the other. And now what? Uh, now what? Uh, <laughs> I just see you on the podcast. <laughs> you, you pull up to Rocky's randomly. Now we have to drop him in. Uh, yeah, now we literally uh, block We invite car. you to come bike riding with us. No, yeah, no. I was thinking in the water. <laughs> I was like, we should have done this podcast riding up to Peacock Flats. It would have been amazing. I would have been lost. I, I would have been walking. I would have been sitting down. About about the last bike How ride we rock on. Been. And it just like one and only bike ride I've ever been on. And it somehow ended up being the worst one we've ever done. Like John, flat tire, midday heat. John That's gave me the bike with uh, mud tires on it. No, you were fine. It was Lauren's bike. It was a good bike. It was just a. It was bad a girl's day. bike. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Rough. I didn't even make it halfway to the up. place we were trying. Yeah, go get down like a few miles in. You gave me a skateboard helmet uh. and. A bike with mud tires. I think that's what's fun, though, is suffering with your friends. That's it. No, you, I suffered by myself because everyone left me. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> this is so funny because on the same subject, we're just, me and I were just talking about this. This guy has been riding people get a hill at one point for like weeks. He's like, come ride with me. Let's go. Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Like, I got my own sick bike. It's the specialized the road bike. Like, I'm yeah. going to kill it. We start going, and John is just be sitting behind me. We hit the Pubakea, and he's sitting right behind me, and I hear him, and I'm, like, starting to die. I'm like, what? He's laughing? Yeah, he's, like, snickering. He's like, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, damn, like, I'm dying here. He just rips past me, and I'm like, dude, like, I train way more than him. Like, uh, how? Like, bro, I'm, like, <laughs> tripping, thinking, like, I lift more. I do way more While endurance he's stuff. I'm riding. Like, I'm getting so in my head. I'm starting to beat myself up. Like Tripping. something's wrong. Like he must be sick or something. Like, my whole plan though, I was going to like sit behind him for a long time and then go like at the end when he was tired. But then I just was like, couldn't hold it anymore. I was like, okay. And I like, went way ahead and I gapped him so far. that But I, you didn't do it in a way that was 
Like I didn't think anything. Like he did it in a way that was just enough that he peeled ahead and then he very slowly peeled further ahead. And I like was like mentally fucking with you. Dude, it, well, I just didn't think it was anything, but he was stronger than me. And I'm then like, when we were about now. halfway up the hill, He's I turned than... around and came back and sat behind and me. And he got me and he did it again. And I was like, no. I was about to just. Hey. Did it. Yeah, we got him. On. Another job. They blocked I, me in. <laughs> we literally blocked him in. I lost the bet. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred dollars. Wait, we never shipped. <laughs> I get to the top. Well, I'm sorry, I, no, I came back and then I laughed him again and then I gapped him way up again. <laughs> Disappeared. Holy shit. And they get, I get so to the top. competitive. I was so competitive. I was in a rage. Like at this point, you're like about to punch you. No, you're just punching. No, Nathan's, guys, Nathan's, dude, Nathan's dude. shaking, and he's. I'm like, I'm like, where were you? Saying? My my shock was on. My shock was on. And that's all I can he's say. On he's, on, he's on a road bike. He's on a road bike. No shock. Oh my. And my and I literally almost perished, dude. I. It put me into such a red line because I was trying so hard to keep up with him. <laughs> oh, no. But my heart it was like 185. I'm you getting shivers. Yourself. Like my legs were <laughs> lactic acid so bad. I couldn't. He's filming me and I get off the bike and I can't really stand. And I'm like, my shock was on. Like <laughs> he's just laughing. I look at his bike and I just see like the midsection like thicker than because they're the specialized. They're really lean. Yeah. I'm like. Is that an e-bike? He's <laughs> like, it's an e-bike. I was like, oh my God. I almost is, died trying to keep up. That is what you love more That's than it. anything is watching us <laughs> suffer. Beating us or watching us suffer. It's so fun. <laughs> so oh. funny. How was, uh, how was the, your competitive run just now? The start of the year. I know you didn't finish where you wanted to finish, but... It's... Were you not feeling too well coming into a couple events or one of them? No, so I was all right. I'm still kind of trying to find my feet again, I guess. Um, it's just the beginning of the year and I know, I just know that these years will end up being pretty long. Um, but for me at this point in my career, it's been pretty interesting because you just have to approach it so differently. You know, when you first get on tour, your whole life, everything revolves around winning a world title. And yeah. that's like the goal. And it makes it really easy actually. Cause you're just like, I'm here to win. I, all I want to do is win. Yeah. And that's the motivation behind everything. And then when you win a world title and you win one or you win two, you just kind of like, okay, shit, I accomplished this life goal. Uh, now what? Like, it can't really become the motivation anymore. I mean, it kind of can, but it kind of can't. You have to find something like a little bit deeper in order to want it. Cause it's, yeah. it's a shitload of work to do it's, the tour and be and competitive. Stress, about, like, like that amount of stress. That's why they like give you guys a year off, right? This, yeah, the stress and the work and everything, the time that goes behind it. Like you're traveling for months and months out of the year and the work that goes into prepping before the year and for the training and the board testing and, and then the mental prep and everything. So that's anyway, to have that motivation, you have to find something that's like deeper again. Yeah. And so for me lately, it's been kind of fun because I've been f leaning into that a little bit more of like finding more of a way to find kind of like triggers to kind of like find flow and stuff and like yeah. really like click yourself into being able to like let go and not have your mind like hold you back on thoughts or anything. Yeah. Because when you compete, it's, I mean, I'm sure you guys have felt it. Like you compete and it's like, I just, why can't I just surf the way I surf when I free surf? Like when I free surf, I, I get such good waves and I make yeah. waves and I, it's and literally it's, why I don't do contests. Same. And a lot of it's like just the mental side of it. And so I've really been leaning into that lately and kind of enjoying that, like finding that routine that helps me kind of get into that and just get into a heat and be like, like just let go and relax and just surf my best. Yeah. And so that's really good, but it gets frustrating. Cause like, you do all this work and it's funny, but like you were saying, like I, that for this last event at sunset, like I got really bad stomach bug the night before the contest. And I literally haven't thrown up in like three years Jesus and you're Lord. sitting there by the toilet and you're just throwing oh, up and you're just God. like, no. Every, you prepped yeah. everything yeah. to the T, yeah. everything's perfectly ready. And then just the one, but it just goes to show like you just, and that goes back into that mental side of it. It's like you, you can't, sometimes you just can't control those things. Like, yeah. I like for me, like I know eventually I'm going to get sick at some point in time. Yeah. Like it's just inevitable. Right. And so you cut those, those moments happen. You go, okay, it's here. Like this is happening. I haven't slept all night. I have a heat in the morning. And then you kind of have to show up and just be like, okay, like I'm going to psych up. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to get myself in the best mindset I can. And then you go out there and you do it. And 
Um, yeah. Like, you did well. Yeah, I made a heat and then that day and then the second heat. <laughs> I was just so cooked. You're telling me you went over the falls and got pinned to the bottom yeah. and you were like, I'm done. I was, <laughs> my second, you know, like went over the falls and I was just pinned on, it was one of those ones where you're super late and you're kind of one with the lip. And I just remember like standing up my board and just being like, I give up. And just going <laughs> over the lip. No. <laughs> going, down. going over the lip and then being underwater and I was pinned on the bottom on my side and I was like, this sucks. And my board was like between my legs and I was like, what is going on? And I grabbed my board and it was the top half of the board. Oh, <laughs> it was just the nose. And I was like, ah! How do you end up with just the nose? I like the no part you're idea. attached to is not even with you. But yeah, so it, it's just, but that's like what I've kind of got liked about competing lately is like, you, you have to figure it out with those yeah, things. Like, yeah. And that's kind of the fun part of it. So I don't know. I'm excited for the year. Um, I don't really care how I did in these last events. I'm just like, not even yeah, worried about moving it. Moving forward. That's like, one of the craziest things I think I've ever heard is what you just said about I've never, cause I can't really compare anything to having a goal, like winning a world title mm -hmm. and trying so hard to get there and then accomplishing it. And then being like, now what? Yeah. yeah. Cause I've always been like, my goals have never been like, like to, it's like, not like, like a one, so like a one moment. Yeah. So I've, never, like, yeah, I've so. never thought like athletes like you yeah, who compete all year for one thing. It's like your whole life. Whoa. Like, now what? It, I did it. the first one, your entire life, like everything arrow goes shot to this the target. Yeah. That is the craziest hits. thing to think about. I've never even like had to put myself in that mindset or put it myself in like your shoes like that. Yeah. And I, you're so focused. Yeah. And I had like, after my first world title, I had like a, a couple of months where I was like really down after. Cause I was just like, I was like, Oh, like, did you almost feel like lost? Yeah, or? totally. Cause I was just like, fuck. Like now, now what do I do? Like, I don't really know. And like, just kind of in my mind, I didn't know how to like, uh, deal with it really. Um, yeah. Crazy. And yeah, it's just such a hard thing. Cause you're, and I, I think the one thing I came to realize though, I was like the one main thing that you come to realize and you probably hear other people talk about it, but it's like, you build it all up to this moment and you think in your head, it's like, you're like, this is the moment. This is the one moment. If I just get this moment, I'm going to be happy. Everything's yeah. set. Like I'm still, yeah it happens and it's like this like five second thing and literally you wake up the next morning and everything resets again and you're like okay like you start going down this whole phase of figuring out what it was but then you look back and you go like oh it was like the process the whole everything that led up to that was what made that special yeah, it was nothing yeah. about the moment every of winning little failure and every little struggle and, and, success, and yeah. all the little mock heats you run with your friends and just the all those like those some of those years where like you came a bunch of to a couple of the events yeah. co smith came yeah like we were kind of you even came to france you were in france one year oh yeah I was. yeah like you guys were all yeah. like around during those events and it was like pretty fun like so it was so just kind of fun. fun and you look yeah. back at all that though and you're like oh that was like that was it that was like the the cool part about this yeah and then you realize you're like it doesn't really matter about winning like it's just more enjoying this process and then whatever happens at the end of that is a bonus yeah. And that's like kind of what I kind of came to realize after is like enjoying your life, enjoying your life. Yeah. yeah. Rather than like getting so lost, like I should be like this or it should be like this. And I think it's pretty easy to get lost in that sometimes. Yeah, That's the craziest thing to think about. Yeah. I've never like, and then, it, and then convince that. yourself like this next one's going to matter as much. I'm yeah. going to do it again. Yeah. Matt, and like, again. Like, it'll yeah. be, it'll be and just as good. Kelly. It is and then Kelly does 11. 11 <laughs> world titles in. That's crazy. But it's crazy because like what you just said though is like you're trying to make the next one seem like it's it's as just important, as, as important yeah. is impossible. No. Because you've done it and you're like, okay, maybe that one didn't make me happy, but maybe this next one will make me happy. Like maybe this next yeah, one will I'll feel better for I'll the feel better. After, yeah, like, I'll feel better for the next one. And you can get stuck in that just like chasing vicious. it, chasing it. Jeez. Have and, you ever spoke with Kelly about I spoke with Kelly important? a little bit about it. Like when I was first, like really like put my mind towards like, okay, I, I really want to learn how to compete while well, I, I was asking him a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was even, I asked Mick a bunch of questions too, but Kelly was really interesting because he seemed like he just changes his focus um, as he's been going, like kind of similar to what I've been saying, but he finds little things within his surfing that he likes to focus on. I think it is like, whether it's like, he just is focusing on the balance of like really macro focus on how he's surfing. And then he goes into a tour year with a new focus. Yeah. And sees how it works. Yeah, like, exactly. And so maybe it, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more depth there. Yeah. Of like, for sure. I mean, for someone to reinvent themselves over and over and over again, it in like six to, different generations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Generations. Like he just loves competing. Yeah. 
like he just loves competing over every year like and the product of that was because he's been competing for what now 40 years uh, <laughs> how old is he? 60 years he's been competing? <laughs> he's 90 years old. He's competing for 100 years. Uh, he, let's see, he won his first world title in 1992. That was before, before us. Was before born. we were born. That was that the year, year was you were born. Oh my his first God. title happened. Holy wow. shit. Wow. That's that insane, dude. I saw something Crazy. the other day. He's He has served in... I think it was 400 CT events. Oh my gosh. 400? <laughs> what? That's insane. One, and he's won something like 57 CT events. Oh my god! The stats are crazy when you look at them. Over that long of a career, yeah. and that many wins and that many events. That is crazy. The next person there is Jordy and he's at like Oh, really? Yeah, 250 or something. Wow. Does Jordy have Two, a world title? No. Oh, the guy, the next up is half of is Kelly. Is half of Kelly. Oh, my God. Half, <laughs> that just went right yeah, over my head. Yeah, half. I didn't even hear that. Half the number of yeah, events. They had it on. The WSL had it, the mm -hmm. starts on. Not the even making like them? Like Somehow not. No. forever. Wow. Or maybe it might have been. They might have just been showing. Who the is now who, competing? Who's currently yeah. competing on tour. That, that was probably the stat they were showing. That's funny. Do you ever... Do you ever find motivation to be like, oh, I want to get more world titles than someone else? No. To keep competing? You don't ever. I don't do find that? motivation in that. My motivation comes from like the mental side of it, of like just what I was saying before. Yeah. Like, for me, I really enjoy when I, if I can get into a heat and I can like just let go and just not even think about anything else and just surf. Like how you free surf. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, you come in and you feel it just feels so good. What about just like completely destroying the other guy? You're not all psyched on that? No, it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it. I was like, you can I was like, it. I know he gets so psyched on that. <laughs> like you on your bike ride. He <laughs> yeah. just loves it more than anything. Because you have to have that fire. You have to just be like, like, I went out there, everything, yeah. I did everything I thought I was going to yeah, do. Yeah, but that only for me, that, that comes from when I let go. And yeah, I can just, when I just let my surf, I can like, and I had you have these heats like with the I had one heat at, with a Bells of Joao and then we both he had like two nines and I just was not even you're just in the heat and you're in that ma mindset of you're just like it doesn't even phase you Crazy. you're just like I don't care like I'm going to win yeah I win now yeah <laughs> and then you just get that like, heat was psycho you just get two yeah. higher nines or something like and I've had heats with Gabe like that you know or like in Tahiti a couple of years like one year he. I had two nines, he had two nines, but, or no, he had a nine and a 10. Yeah. And then the next year he had a low nine and a 10 and I had two high nines. And I'm oh my like, gosh. but to have it's... those heats where you're just like, and then you're throwing away like eights and low nines yeah. and you're just like, but you're in this it's mindset like where you don't even care. Fire. And you're just like, I don't care. Like whatever comes, I'm going to get a nine. What yeah. about the heat? I was just rewatched this like a few weeks ago where I think it was Jamie and you like, Oh shook his my hand, god, that was so And funny. you needed you needed a nine, right? Like or, a nine point three or something. And then it was like the last minute of the heat, and Jamie like went over to him and was like, Good job, like shook his hand. Remember that? And then you just jetted away. <laughs> Jamie goes like this, puts his hands <laughs> up. Yeah. And then he puts his hands up to claim it and then falls off his board. And then I like see a wave and I'm like, oh my god, and then I like <laughs> help my and I start paddling and he just like starts gunning it for yeah, me and i was yeah. like i'm gonna hail mary the left and then i was like looking left and then i was like oh no like i'm not going left and then i just last second went right and did like this weird late faded yeah, drop into a back door wave and won the event yeah and won the event with minute left after jamie and you sure jamie shook his hand and he claimed it and he claimed it and he was so salty at pipeline <laughs> so bad. So bad. That's gotta he be still shit. talks about it and say, so he you know that wasn't the score, right? <laughs> <laughs> He'll never forget that. Never. I don't think anyone will. No. So dope. That was so funny. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a crazy. Jamie had like a 10 and a 9. I had a 10 psycho. and that 9. Or it, was, it was like wild. That was funny. Well, are you still riding pintails on everything? Uh, no, I, try, I ride squash shell now. Last year, I, was, I tried to go to all pintails. But then I didn't love it. So this year I'm on a squash tail and for my small wave boards, pintail for medium small waves and then 
Pentails out. What about yeah. how's it been with just the full change over now to you running your own brand and you're going to the new competition year and all that, but you're under your own flag, basically like working with your own brand, you have all your own clothing and the whole thing of running the business and competing and doing that. I really like it because I, I really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy going in and talking to the team and meeting with those guys and just our whole team and everyone's kind of getting like so on the same page of what we're doing, which has been really fun. And just making gear that you love and that you want to make is so cool. It's like, so dope. Yeah. I mean, it's so sick. Like we talk about it all the time. Like we go because we do our random stuff. Like yeah. we go hiking in the mountains or we're foiling or whatever we're doing. And we're like always critiquing our stuff. Yeah. And when you're running your own program, like you can go and make that change right away. Totally. And like, so yeah. like we talk about it and then I'm like, you know what? That is a good idea. And like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make this change. Yeah. And you go in and you start working on it. And then to see the things come out of that, yeah. it's so fun. It's so, it's sick. so that, sick. That is sick. And you too, That's like cool. you kind of do your, some, yeah. like, I mean, I, but not even just that, but like running the business of the shack and like, yeah, it's cool to see thing. things that start as an idea come to life. Yeah. And then you have it in front of yeah. you yeah. after like you, the work you put into it, like exactly what you're saying. You like get to see it and hold it and be like, wow, like I, it's, it's, yeah it's so cool that's a super satisfying feeling i feel like and obviously you like have other partners but with yourself on the nose is it like a pressure off you're like like yeah like, like no one's fucking firing me like i can say what i want yeah i can do whatever uh, i want at first it was kind of more of a pressure i felt like because you're like oh you shit be like you want to be successful on a yeah. certain thing and then and then once you get into it though and you start it really starts to look the way you want it and everything starts to kind of fall and the pieces start falling into place it becomes like a part of you and then you just don't really think about it anymore. It yeah. just comes kind of natural. Like I used to like hate dread going to California for stuff. And like now like we have like a lot of our business over there. And so going there and, and doing the whole thing with the team, I, I love it. Like it's so much fun. I'll spend, I'll sit in the office for like eight hours and just be like, okay, like just walk <laughs> around and just like, oh, yeah, oh, it's sick because everyone's like, just like yeah, like, oh, right, like, 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 like working so hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look and check all this out. <laughs> but all that stuff is because like you own it and you yeah. know you're directly helping yourself. Yeah, like, you, mm -hmm. you know like this is my baby and I'm in here doing work for like my brand. I yeah. And it's fun because like we're in a, we're in a position like where we're still a pretty small brand, so like we can make pretty big changes and like we've started this like pretty cool test pilot program where we bring people in each year a certain amount of people as a test pilot. And then they get a lot of the product before it comes out. And then they give us all this feedback on it yeah. from people from doing different things all around the world. Like we had one guy on one of the test pilot meetings, he was cleaning windows on the side of a building. That's so sick. Wearing <laughs> one of the jackets. And he's like, yeah, I really like this jacket, but it would be cool if it had this. And they give their honest feedback. And then we take all that into account and go, oh, okay. Like we're going to make these changes. It's like a little mini version so of the cool. data devices. It's so cool. Like you just have your little data collectors yeah. out there. And it's so fun. Yeah. And then I, it creates also like a environment too, like where I see people in the water and they'll have the gear and they'll be like, Oh, I love this. Like, oh, I just wish like the trunks, like uh, one I got the other day was like, they're like, I wish the board shorts could fit the large iPhone in the pocket. They're like, it's just a little uh, bit tight for it. it oh. And I'm like, Oh, like I was like, cool like i'd never really thought about it. like you guys are just using the shorts yeah so like okay that's a good thing like we're gonna we'll work on that or uh, and then you can go make that change right away and then we can go in and start working that change into the next season like where i think a lot of the bigger brands they get have, so, they're established, so established yeah. and so locked into like one direction mm -hmm. um and that's like a cool thing about being a small brand so that is really cool so uh, i've found a lot of the feedback i get from the shack is oh like just bad things from friends. <laughs> like, everything's too expensive. Or the coffee's too hot. I was like, God, don't even tell me. Like, the coffee's don't too hot. Don't go there if you don't want it. <laughs> the like, coffee's too hot. Yeah, I like the friend that got the free coffee. Tell yeah, like, it's too hot. Like, I used your name. I got a free coffee, but it was too hot. You're like, you can pay next time. <laughs> like, I'm gonna tell us. I don't know. There's something else. Yeah. You started a business. So yeah. yeah. Well, cool. I think that yeah. was fun and. Sweet. Thanks for coming. Unless on. you have anything else you want to talk about, call someone out on tour, whatever. Shout outs. <laughs> shout outs. <laughs> shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> anyone you want to shout out? <laughs> I think though we should do this again on the bikes. 
Yes. So me and Koa did one where we uh, worked out on the assault bikes and then answered questions. Oh what if you put God. GoPros on everyone's handlebars? It would be so fun. We'll go ride Peacock Flats. Yeah. And you Mike's guys are going to leave GoPros. me. Oh, we might need earpieces that we can talk to each other. So <laughs> yes. If I, yes. if I get stuck behind, I can just be there. Hey, Koa, where are you at? <laughs> That's a good idea. Let's do that. Oh, my gosh. Zord can be in it? Yes. Zord's been, Zord's been coming out on the hill. <laughs> I hate biking, especially on those bikes, dude. Koa's going to be doing the zigzag. You know when you start doing the zigzag turn? Yeah, I witnessed Zord doing it just the other day. <laughs> you like, give a little spurt of power and then turn off and stop. And then spurt again and then turn off and stop. No, it was zigzag. I was like, it's not good. Yeah, it's extreme. Uh, okay. Thanks. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Like the podcast. Subscribe yeah. to the channel. Yeah. Check us out on Apple, Spotify. We're on yeah. all those YouTube. We're on all the platforms now. Thanks again, John. Go check out his brand. Oh, Florence Marine. Sweating.